going to uh, be talking about, uh, continuing to talk about the glory of God, but we're going to be talking about portals of glory. And uh, last Sunday, we experienced a portal of glory in this house. And so you're going to hear more about that in the next few weeks. And we've got wonderful things in store for you from God. But today we're going to look in the Word. I want you to understand. For some of you, you may not understand about open heaven or portals or, or the things that we talk about. Sometimes in the church, we, we use a lot of Christianese and people don't understand it. And they think, you know, you're a little crazy. Well, let's just look in the Word, shall we? And validate what God is doing and what He's saying. Hallelujah. Last week, Pastor Sean preached from Mark chapter 2 about removing the roof to get to Jesus. I was messed up by that sermon. I mean, I was totally messed up because I, I'm hearing the Lord say, they dug a portal to Jesus. They removed the roof off his house. I was telling Pastor Sean, I said, I was thinking about how hard it must have gotten to get someone who was paralyzed up, imagine it, up on that, they was on a stretcher, up on that roof and then dig a hole and let, let, it, let that down, let that pallet down. I told Pastor Sean, I said, knowing that Jesus healed, I would have probably just thrown him down. I would have drug him up there because I was sure I could do it alone. Come on. You know how we are sometimes. I'd have drug his body up there. been hard, but you know, if you've been paralyzed a long time, you're usually pretty small. So I would have, I would have drug him up there, dug a hole, pitched him down there, knowing that he's going to be resurrected, healed, okay? You know, I read that passage again. And I realized what compassion and faith these men of God had. They believed that Jesus could do anything. And they were determined. They had such compassion for this paralytic that they did whatever it took. How many times do you pray? Do you go and pray for someone because you're going to do whatever it takes to get their healing. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. So. So have you ever looked in the word at every time the heavens were opened? Now there's way too many for us to talk about today. But there is a selection of things the Lord wanted us to talk about today. And that's what we're going to do. And we're just believe. Listen. Some. The Lord said this. He said, you live under an open heaven. Jesus opened it over you. But there are things that we do that, and I, 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 I don't have another word to use for it, but things we do can activate the pouring out from heaven. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We were created to live under an open heaven. But do we understand what it means for us, for you and for me, as sons and daughters of God, to truly live? I mean live it. I'm not talking about reading it in the Word. I'm talking about living it out every day of our lives. I want you to turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28 because we're going to go to the beginning and we're going to end at the end and we're going to talk about things that God gave me for us to look at. Deuteronomy 28 and we're going to read verses 12 and 13. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail, if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God. 
that I give you this day and carefully follow them. You will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Hallelujah. From the very beginning, God said, I will open the heavens over you. Glory to God. If you will obey my word. So what happens when we read the word and we obey? We're living under, we're, we're activating heaven. Hallelujah. Sons and daughters, the word. This is the word. He will open for you the treasury of his bounty. He will send rain on your land and bless you. All we have to do is obey. And you know what I say today? Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Now, here's a controversial scripture. Don't get all upset and, and, and feel like, oh, she's talking about my money now. If you get a room full of pastors together, you say, what's the biggest problem in the church? They will say, getting your people to understand that tithing is for today. Come on. So Malachi 3 and verse 10, listen to this. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do says the Lord of heaven's armies. Wow! Lord of hosts, the Lord of heaven's armies. The Lord of heaven's armies is making a decree today to you. If you will bring, come on, listen. I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great that you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Wow. Listen, I can tell you what it's like before tithing and what it's like after tithing. Come on, anybody in here say yes, Lord. Come on. Listen, I look around this room and I see people who who did not tithe were afraid to tithe. Are y'all hearing that? Were afraid to obey God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I take authority over a spirit of fear concerning money. In the name of Jesus, everyone that has ears to hear, I'm telling you, you don't have to be afraid because his word is your banker. You don't have to be afraid. So in the name of Jesus, that spirit of fear over your finances is gone in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Obedience is huge to God. People love to say, are you ready? That's Old Testament. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) I can tell you the abundant blessing Father has poured out on Steve and I and our family because we said yes to him. We, we didn't just think it was good enough for us to tithe. We taught our children to tithe. Because if you want to live in poverty, hold on to your stuff. Now listen to this. He didn't just say, I'm going to bless you in your money. Did he? Now listen to this. The blessings from the treasury of heaven our answered prayer, turning back the enemy from my family, heaven's army fighting on our behalf, supernatural protection, opening doors of opportunity. Beloved, it is so greater than your finances. That's good. Carnal-minded men only think of their finances and hold on to money. But I'm telling you, when you do what the word says, He blesses every part of your life. Can someone say amen in the house? Hallelujah. I don't want to miss one thing God is doing or one thing he has for me. Do you? I don't want to miss one thing. Nothing. Hallelujah. We're promised in Deuteronomy 11.21. Oh, first time I read the scripture, I thought, Lord. God, 
Can that be true? This is what he said. That our days can be like heaven upon the earth when we obey God. That was in the Old Testament. Now we're living under an open heaven. Every time I obey God, I get closer to living heaven on the earth. Come on. Somebody say amen. Amen. We are admonished in Colossians 3, verses 2 and 3, to set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. These are heavenly principles given to us, covenant people, to care for us, to watch over us. Now listen, when Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus, you've got to go, you've got to go read uh, chapter 3 of John. When Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus about being born again or being born from above, he said this in, in uh, um, John 3 and verse 12. Listen. I speak to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then? Somebody say, how then? then? Will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Come on. This was about salvation. This was about being born again. But beloved, I can tell you, when we start preaching about heavenly things, when we start preaching about the possibilities of all that God has given us, you know, I came out of religion. I came out of limiting your understanding of the word of God. And I remember when I got baptized in the spirit, And I started reading the Bible anew. I said, Lord, I want to understand everything in your word. And I want to understand everything you have given me to walk in. I didn't put a lid on him. See, religion will put a lid on you. And will try to explain away the things God has given us. If we cannot understand earthly things... How in the world are we going to understand? See, uh, let let me tell you. This is what I see in the church. An earthly mentality that it's impossible to receive heavenly revelation. Come on. And unless we receive heavenly revelation, we miss most of the things God has opened up for us. Can you say amen? Amen. Can you say, I receive, Lord? I receive, Lord. So let's take a closer look. Look with me at John 1, and we'll start reading in verse 47. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity, How do you know about me, Nathanael asked. And Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. You know when we do that, someone gives us a prophetic word. Oh, it must be, that's God. But beloved, I want to tell you, There's so much more to him than a prophetic word you get every once in a while. Beloved, I want you to understand that what he said, what he, Jesus said of himself, he has given to us. Do you believe that just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than this? Then he said, I tell you the truth. You will all see heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Don't you love that translation? I love that. The one who is the stairway between heaven and earth. Isn't that glorious? What Jesus was telling Nathaniel is, I'm opening up the heavenly portals over you all to give you access to all that is in heaven. Amen. Is there sickness in heaven? No. Is there cancer in heaven? No. Is there poverty in heaven? No. Come on. 
Is there demonic torment in heaven? No. Come on. Let's get back what God yeah. promised. Yeah. Hallelujah. In Matthew 3, Jesus was being baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, glory to God, the heavens opened over him and the spirit descended like a dove and rested on him. Beloved, on the day of Pentecost, when it had fully come, and they were all together in one accord. They obeyed God. They went and prayed. Come on. And they were all in one accord. And then suddenly a sound from heaven. Beloved, I'm telling you, the church is getting ready to hear some sounds from heaven. Come on, do you have faith for it? Do you have faith for sounds from heaven? And a mighty rushing wind came in, filled the whole house, and they were baptized in the spirit and in fire. Oh, beloved, before Jesus comes, the church of the living God is going to get such a glorious, fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. We are going to go out with joy. We're going to be led by peace and we're going to take the fire of God and we're going to talk to people about Jesus. We're doing it now. Come on, I had one person say yes. We're doing it now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everything changed in their lives from that moment. Beloved, we must never, ever miss what has been opened to us. Amen? All through the Bible, God wanted us to know always He is present in our lives. Jesus opened up over you an entrance into the heavenly realm. Wow. Jesus opened up for you the heavenly realm. Hallelujah. There are times when we're meeting together that the heavenly realm, it opens up and, and heavenly blessings begin to pour out. I, I loved how these four men had faith to take the roof off and lower the paralyzed man down. Hallelujah. Do you know when we engage with heaven in worship, we're taking the roof off. Come on. See, we just, we just did that, that last song. The roof was coming off. We were honoring the name of Jesus. Come on. Right here in this sanctuary, the heavens are now opened. And pouring out is happening. You see, there are times when we're worshiping. Listen, if you don't know, you don't know, right? There are times when we're worshiping when you can feel the atmosphere shifting. We've gotten to a place. He's here. He's opened up a way for us. It's a, it's, a, it's a pouring out for us. You know, when he comes, it agrees with the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Oh. In Revelation 2 and 3, we're given an example of Jesus. When he had a word for the church, it says, Jesus comes and walks in the midst of his church. Do you know he's still doing that? It wasn't just on those, we, we think, oh, that was so good. Yeah, that was in the Bible. Oh, ye of little faith. That was in the Bible. That's today. Amen. Today. Let me tell you something. When you get up here and you stand behind this pulpit, you better be preaching the word. You better be honoring God if you want him to come and move. I'm not up here. Because I love the flash of being in ministry 
Oh, no. No. If anyone tells you it's flashy and it, it can be exciting, hallelujah. But if people th- t- tell you that it's, oh, it's just, it's romantic, it's, it's glamorous, it's all of those things. No, it isn't. It is staying this close to God, feeling his breath on you, saying, God, I can't get up there unless you speak to me. And then being sure that you give everything he said because you're wanting a pouring out from heaven on the people of God. Oh, hallelujah. You see, when we read the Bible, we're taking the roof off to get to Jesus. Some have said, you know, Pastor, I really can't read the Bible. If it wasn't so boring, I get sleepy. Anybody ever said that? I get sleepy when I read. I would, I, I, maybe you've been here when I've told this before. I was ministering to a beloved Presbyterian pastor's wife. And she said to me, I, I can't read the Bible. She, she knew that I did some deliverance and inner healing. And she came to my house and she said, I can't read the Bible. I fall asleep. Every time I start reading the Bible and I looked at her and I said, glory to God. Well, she felt like that was really misplaced until I said, what has God got for you that the enemy is keeping you from the word of God? Her eyes lit up and she said, I'm telling you, It happens every time. So I begin to bind up that spirit of slumber, that demonic spirit of slumber. Let me tell you something. Every place you're attacked is a place where God wants to move. If you feel like the heavens are closed over you because of an area of your life, God is saying, I'll cleanse you. I will open up for you if you will repent and do what my word says. And then you can see God move. Hallelujah. Don't get discouraged when you look at those places. Listen, this year has been a year where the devil has come after my family. Oh. I was praying yesterday. I was praying over my family just like I do every day. And I started praying in the spirit. And, and the Lord showed me I was standing with the Lord over my whole family. And he says, the devil knows what's on your children. The devil knows what I have for them in these last days. Come on, someone needs to hear this about your family. And he says, every place where they have attacked, where I have attacked is the place where they have breakthrough and anointing to bring healing to others. Come on. Is this speaking to anybody? Come on. Where has he been attacking you? Come on. It's the very place. You got to look at that and you got to take authority over it. You know what I did? I stood and I started speaking what I've been dreaming of in my heart for my family. Oh, I got out of the box on that one, let me tell you. I started speaking some pretty big things. You know why? Because he wants to do it. If he put it in my heart, he put it there. I am his. I have given my life over to his control. When he comes and shows me possibilities, I start speaking them knowing that it's the year of the open door and my mouth has to be an open door. And when I speak God's possibilities, they will come to pass. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When we engage with God in prayer, we're taking 
the roof off. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke this to me, and I think it's good for every one of us. You know those times when the Lord will tell you to go somewhere and speak these words to someone. You know those times? It sounds really weird to you. Come on. Get, everybody stand up just for a minute. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I want you to just step over and out of your box you've been in. Come on. Come on. Some of you may say, oh, no, I'm not in a box. Well, there's something bigger God wants for you. Step out of the box. Okay. Because he has assignments for you. Are you going to fulfill the assignments of God? Come on. You can get back in your seat. I'm not through preaching yet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you know those things he's spoken to you. He said, I want you to go to this person. I want you to go to this place. I want you to go to a store because there is someone there who needs a word from me. Who is going to carry that word if it's not sons and daughters of God? Who's going to carry the word? Come on. And and you take the roof off the minute you go. The heavens are open over you. It's just obedience. The heavens are open over you. What is God going to do now? Oh, my. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say what the Lord tells me to say. What's God doing? The roof is off. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get healed. Somebody's going to get delivered. Somebody's going to get saved. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. There is a situation that God wants to pour out on through you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We cannot take these times lightly. Don't say something like this. Lord, I promise you, the next time I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Come on. It takes one time stepping out of the box and obeying God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe we're going to experience an open heaven over the persecuted church. I said, Lord, never a greater time for you to tell me this. I have grieved over what's happening in Israel. Over 250 people already murdered and many taken hostage and many of them are Christians. This is brothers and sisters in Christ. And the Lord says, I am going to have an open heaven over them where they're going to be just surrounded by my glory. Oh, come on. Listen to this in Acts chapter 7. After Stephen had been accused by the Sanhedrin or that religious spirit of blasphemy, he preached to them. And they were so enraged that they were gnashing their teeth. They drug him out into the streets and stoned him. And if you'll look with me at Acts chapter 7. Hallelujah. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Beloved, I believe today that Jesus is standing in heaven over those who are being tortured, those who are being persecuted and killed. I believe that Heavens are open over Israel. Come on, somebody. Y'all feel that? I believe heavens are open over Israel. And Hamas, I say to you, no weapon is going to be strong enough to stop our God. Come on, church. I'm telling you, the heavens open when the saints of God are martyred. And Stephen said, Jesus was standing. You know, we read in the Bible, 
all through the Bible, Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Come on. Making intercession. But when Stephen, after he had preached the truth, Jesus stood and was standing to welcome him home. Come on. People act like death is the worst thing in the world. I want to tell you something. When Stephen got there, there was a hallelujah party going on in heaven. Okay, come on. I believe that there is going to be such a presence of God surrounding the persecuted church. In this day, we're going to see more and more of it. We're going to hear more and more of it. But we're going to see such a glory, a portal of glory around the persecuted church that stories will be spread far and abroad. Come on, hallelujah, of what God is doing. And the last thing I want us to look at is the prophetic portal that is opened up for us now. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. After this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Now, beloved, I don't need to know your end time doctrine to know this. We are living in the last days. We're going one way or the other. Come on. But I believe that the Lord is calling the church up. Come up, for I have things to speak to you. I have things to show you that are to come, okay? I believe we're in the greatest time of a prophetic outpouring we have ever experienced. And beloved, that's why there are so many false prophets that keep jumping up, saying things that don't agree with the word of God. Beloved, God never speaks except in agreement with his word. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word has always been our instruction. The Holy Spirit has always been our teacher, our counselor, and our guide. Beloved, this is the year of the open door. And I believe we're going to hear of heavenly visitations with Jesus and instruction of what is to come and what we do. Y'all, y'all look like a bunch of Baptists. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're looking like... Come on. Come on, Brother Ryan, you got some things to fix when you come up here. <laughs> With your prophetic voice. Good night. Everybody's looking like, well, Pastor, don't go too far. She's gone too far. If somebody tells me that, guess what? I go further. Because I know I've hit, I've hit somewhere. I've hit something. When people say, oh, oh, she's gone too far. Now she's gone over the edge. Hallelujah. That woman preacher has gone over the edge. Yeah. I went over the edge when I was seven years old and met Jesus. Oh, my goodness, I knew everybody in my school needed to get Jesus. I went and I preached at seven years old. I stood and I said, he is your way. Jesus is the only way. You need Jesus into your heart. I'm trying to get these kids saved. I've I've calmed down a little bit since then. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe we have entered such a time where God is speaking and moving in his church. King Jesus is on the move. Come on, people. King Jesus is on the move, and I want to move with him. Where are we going, Lord? Some people say, you know, my life is just so boring. Wow. 
King Jesus is on the move and he wants you to move with him. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As much as we hear about what God is doing in places across the earth, we have entered a time. Come on. I want you to agree with me on this. We have entered a time of a great outpouring that will hit every region where sons and daughters are crying out to God. Do you believe that? Well, I heard that God was moving over here and over there. Beloved, go after him with everything in you. I'm not giving up. He's here. And the glory is on the increase. Amen? Come on. I believe we've entered a time that God has set where the greatest days of visitation we have ever as a church or the church experienced. Jesus grieved when he said, at looking at Jerusalem, they missed the day of their visitation. Don't miss it, beloved. Don't miss what God's doing. God's doing something glorious. God's doing something magnificent right now, even in this room. Let's don't miss the day of his visitation. Let's stand our feet.